Welcome to our Meet the Experts Film Producers panel. I'm here with Rachel Brosnahan and Jordan Horowitz from I'm Your Woman, uh, Jess Wu Calder and Keith Calder from One Night Miami, uh, Palin Chow from Over the Moon, and Samantha Hausman from Wander Darkly. Uh, now, of course, in addition to being an art form, the movie business is a business. Uh, and, and I feel like producing is sort of on that dividing line where you're navigating the business to kind of bring that art to, to the audience. Uh, so, so what's it like to kind of play that role in the industry? Uh, let's start with uh, Palin. Um, you know, I think that uh, it's definitely multiple hats. And my favorite job as a producer is actually just making a great movie. Um, and, um, you know, sometimes I think um, thinking about those other aspects of it, um, can get more complicated. Personally, I, I try to approach it uh, definitely movie first. Um, but with that in mind as well, I'll give you an example um, from Over the Moon. Um, you know, the impetus was we really wanted to share this story about this moon goddess that had been famous uh, for a long time in China. And uh, we could have just told the story of the moon goddess um, straight ahead. But we kind of felt like, who wants to see that? <laughs> it's a thousands of year old story. Um, and so from a relatability standpoint, we felt like if it was a modern day girl in China and um, kind of celebrating the tradition and the honor um, of, of uh, the tradition and the, and the knowledge of having this in her family um, and this tale that she's always known and the idea that she wanted to go to the moon to meet that moon goddess, we'd enter the world through her eyes. Um, and that just felt like it was gonna be a much more relatable, accessible way to go, um, especially since we were looking to bring the story, not just to China, but to the, to the globe at large. So, um, you know, I, I think that that aspect of it definitely impacted how we approach the story, um, but we told, you know, the darn best version of that story that we could. Uh, I'll jump in. Um... Yeah, I mean, I, I, I love making things. I mean, that's kind of why I, it, it, it's funny. I, I mean, that's why I became a producer. I like to, I like to, I like to make things, you know, um, I, I, um, I, I think that's sort of why I, I had, I had written in college and I was actually an actor in college too. And I guess Rachel, you can speak to that too, but, um, but like I definitely left all of that because I produced theater at first and then started producing um, film. And a lot of it was because I just, there wasn't the kind of stuff that I wanted to see out there. And so I kind of got people together. Like I, I just had ideas about what kind of stuff I wanted to get made and then just found ways to get made. And it's different every time. And I think that's one of my favorite things about producing is like, there's a way you build stuff and there's sort of like general ideas about how you, piece things together, especially coming out of the indie space as, as I and um, I think most of us here did. Um, you know, it, it's different every time. Like the the challenges are different, the way that things have to come together and the order at which they come together and, you know, what leads to something else. Um, those those things change every time. Um, the thing that doesn't change is that you're doing it with people, um, just like individuals and you're building those teams. And I think um, the process of that building and the fact that building it is is new each time, but you're still making things. I think that for me is is what I find most exciting about being a producer. It's 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 working with people to do that 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 task. I'm I'm a I'm a big believer in like um, like deep deep like deep specificity. So like I think like there are like a lot of the same. Like, look, there are like a million movies that are love stories, right? But like, what makes Blue Valentine better? Like, what makes Blue Valentine better than a bunch of other um, stories about couples, right? And for me, it's this deep specificity that Derek Sanfrance brings to that movie, right? Like, he's writing what he knows so well. Or like, I May Destroy You, or some of these other shows that you're like, what, what makes shows that are about a group of friends um, so, so much uh, more relatable or fresher or different than all these other other shows that are out there, right? And I think that it's that when somebody can bring such a deep personal specificity to a story, 
that that is like unlike somebody else's um, experience. That to me like drives me to bring that voice or that story into the world. And I think as long as like um, that can continue to happen and that like, um, I don't know if that's like singular vision filmmaking or deep specificity or like what that catchphrase is. But I think as long as for me at least, I can continue to find that, I think that audiences will resonate with that. And whatever that means, like that could be like queer content or that can be like female content, that, that could be about anything. But as long as there's like deep specificity, I think that people respond to that um, no matter what it's about. At least that's my, that's what drives me and my producer hat. I think just jumping off of what um, Sam said so beautifully is, I know for for Keith and me, we had sort of like a, an epiphany um, after Trump was elected, uh, where we started to really look at the content that we were putting out and realizing what a responsibility that, 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 that we all had. And I, I sometimes will have general uh, meetings with, with fil filmmakers or other producers where they, where they will ask us like well, what are you looking for or you know like what like what are you looking for next and usually what I say where uh, is that I'm looking for um, like what what attracts us to a project is is if we feel like when if we make this it will leave the world in a better place and um, half the time the people I'm meeting with laugh and are like oh you're just, and then, but the other half, half, half of the time, they like take it too, too, too hard. And I think that um, for us, like it's 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 really important now more than ever that that the stories that that we're telling, we feel like, and it also sounds very egotistical as I say it out 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 loud, but that that it can help make the world better. Kind of piggybacking off of that, you know, part of the interest in making sort of walking down this new path after having been an actor for such a long time is that as an actor, I am so fortunate to have felt creatively satisfied just acting in projects for the most part, but also there are so many pieces of the business side of things that from where I was sitting, I, I wanted to see change, not only as it related to me as an actor, but in the industry at large. And it feels like being a producer is one of the one of the few positions where you actually have the ability to be a part of those changes that you want to see, whether it's through the stories that you're telling or how you're hiring, what kinds of filmmakers and projects you're amplifying and elevating. It's um it's a it's a very exciting position with a lot of responsibility as well to you know, to, to be a part of those changes that we want to see and that we've been doing lip service to for such a long time. This, you know, people in this position have the ability to be a part of enacting those changes. And, uh, you know, the, the industry has been changing so much in recent years, uh, just with so much uh, digital content, whether it's Amazon or Netflix, uh, or, or Hulu or any number of other services. And of course, in this past year, we've seen so much more of that, uh, uh, given that theaters have closed down. Uh, but it, like, it does sort of present opportunities for films to get seen that weren't necessarily there before at the same time. So uh, like, I was wondering what, what you guys feel about you know, how that industry like, has progressed in, in that direction. Uh, and I guess let's start with uh, Rachel, who's been on Amazon for a couple of years now. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I've i made a career on streaming services, <laughs> so I love the streamers. I I feel like, I, I also feel like both can coexist. You know, I love movie theaters. There's nothing like seeing a film in a movie theater and being able to see on such a grand scale everyone's craftsmanship, you know, all the craftsmanship that went into to making a gorgeous film. But I feel like the cool thing about the streamers is that they give people the opportunity to find projects so many years after they were released. I feel like projects are having renaissances that came out so long ago. And that's really exciting to know that something really can live on that way. Um, 
I'm excited to see how they keep growing. I feel like streamers are also providing a lot of opportunities to uh, to new voices, to different voices, to different kinds of stories that might not have been perceived to have the same kind of success theatrically. Well, just to just to jump in on that, I mean, I think a lot of it, and I, and I've said this before, and it's a little wonky, but like the the model of theatrical and even the model of independent film and the way you've had to put it together in the past has been so um, historical and so backwards facing and very much about like what has comped before for it. Like, did this perform previously? And if we live in a world where we're looking at what's performed previously, there's literally no way to make progress um, just from a pure business model point of view. And I think what the streamers provide is a, a different business model that's more subscription based. And a subscription based model is about finding new audiences so you can continue to grow outwards, right? Not about replicating past success. So when you're looking for new audiences, um, I think just to speak to, to Samantha's thing about specificity too, you're looking to, to get a lot more specific with the stories you're telling and also t tell them to um, audiences that are underserved. Um, not that you need to, not that I'm telling a, a, a story about a queer people or, or people of color, just two people that are queer and people of color. But I think when you're telling those specific stories, you're tapping into a much wider audience base um, and you're finding univ universality through that specificity in a much more interesting way. And I think streamers are, um, the model itself is something that is um, pushing people to do that and allowing um, new voices both in front front of and behind the camera and getting those stories told in a way that they couldn't because of the um, because of what the, the previous model of, of our business sort of um, hamstrung us from doing. I'll, I'll add on to what Jordan's saying about the, the previous model. It, it, it's not just that it's historical based, it's that it's historical anecdote based. Hmm. It's very like, based on, on an individual person's perception of, hmm. of the past and uh, you know, totally. looking at how a movie performed, someone at a studio may decide, oh, that's because of this actor, or it's because of this concept, or because like it's a kidnapping story. Like it, it's 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 not even really necessarily related to why people chose to see that movie. It's based on uh, oftentimes a single person's opinion on on what made that movie successful. Hmm. And what uh, hadn't yet worked out themselves in therapy. <laughs> for, yes, a lot of them. <laughs> that goes for audiences too. That goes for everyone. Yeah. 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 I, 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 oh, go ahead. Critics, no, 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 you go. I mean, you please, you. So you oh, I, I was just gonna say, I, I, I would echo that sentiment, and just in terms of like the freedom, um, in in terms of diversity of voices, I think is really exciting. And you know, in when you um, make an animated film, it's usually quite costly um, at, you know, at like a Disney or a DreamWorks. Uh, not that I'm racking on them, they're very amazing studios, obviously. Um, but, you know, I, I've worked at both places and um, just the pressure of the opening weekend and, you know, that kind of looming over you through the entire production process. And really you can put out um, an animated film in that old model and your film could make $150 million and it's a failure because that wasn't enough to recoup like what was needed to uh, make the film, market the film, do all the things the film needed. Um, and so I think that, um, you know, the streamers really gives you this amazing freedom from that. And I think as a result, like such differing and diverse voices and stories um, are being told and the way that they're being told, you know, it's really exciting. I think I will. I will just to be the the salt in the in the beverage. I don't know what my analogy is here, but yeah, the, yeah. Uh, uh, the streamers are young, and I think that they're 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 built on on an economic model that's still being figured out. And so I'm optimistic, and I hope that the trends that we're talking about positively are are turn into. Uh, the full reality of what the streamers continue to be. But I, I do think the jury is still out on if that will be the case or if this is a side effect of, of uh, a growth period that, that may not stay, stick around afterwards. So I, 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 I want to make sure we're looking forward to, uh, to, a, to holding them to the standards they're setting right now when it comes to the next you know, 5, 10, 20 years longer of, of uh, content. Yeah, I, like I think that. also like, no, I think, I, look, I'm I'm grateful for, to, for the streamers and that like, 
Netflix gave me an opportunity to make a movie a few years ago that no one would have given me an opportunity to make about me and my brother that my best friend wrote and directed and she went on to create and show run the new L word. And because of Netflix, it sort of changed our lives. So, and I don't think anyone else would have made that movie. Now, I don't know that Netflix would ever make that movie now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think um, that that is a conversation that no one is really having. Right. And I think that that's a conversation that probably people should be having, which is like, are they going the Netflixes and the streamers going to continue to take risks on newer filmmakers and riskier content um, that isn't just award season sort of like bait um, and isn't just um huge um, movie star driven stuff. I mean, having said that, I want to make movie star driven stuff also. <laughs> like, that's great. Like, just give me those plays. I, like, I want to do that too. Like, that's awesome. I think the other thing that to, to talk, to think about, like, and look, I'm all about Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, and I love all of you guys, and let's go make tons of movies together. But um, it's hard to break out into the zeitgeist, right? Like, that's the other thing about streamers that's hard is like, you don't have the same sort of thing that you get with like the kind of like, theater sort of water cooler like um taste maker thing because you kind of get put on a plat you kind of get put on the platform and then how do you break out into the zeitgeist and i and i would love i mean i guess i in a way i look to sort of taste makers and producers and directors and obviously all the people in these streamers of like, how do you break out into that zeitgeist? Like, how do you become the movie that is talked about on at, at the movie out, on, at these streamers? Um, and I think that that's a conversation. Well, that, that's also, you know? I think that's also, it's particularly amplified. Like that issue is particularly amplified. Yes. Right now. Um, this year, every, for sure. Everything yes. is just so flat. Yes. In a way. Like there are no conversations yeah. anywhere. There's just some people. No. Testing. Together, you know, and, dead. <laughs> we just bought a water, yeah. water cooler for our office, so you know, right. we're bringing the water cooler back. So you're, so you guys are, you guys are starting the Zeitgeist conversation. You're starting it. All right, all right. We're just getting into it. You know what? Do the, like the, the the new, new, the like the stories. I'm gonna follow you guys. You're gonna set the tone. <laughs> With the water cooler, just you and Julia. Just us, just, just hanging out by the water cooler, <laughs> chatting about things. It's a podcast. Set, setting the zeitgeist. <laughs> setting the zeitgeist. The movie zeitgeist. I think things are still breaking through. Yeah. I mean, you know, I yeah. I was uh, having a uh, conference call with a um, director I'm working with at Hong Kong recently, and we were talking story, and he goes, you know in the Queen's Gambit when she's looking and I'm like, you're watching the Queen's Gambit? Like, you know, it, it's it's everywhere. And I, I think, you know, obviously Netflix doesn't have 25 Queen's Gambits, but I think things are still breaking through. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think I think television, for whatever reason, yeah. also yeah. tends to break through a little bit more cleanly sometimes than, than movies yeah. do. And also it depends on who we're talking about. Like there are certainly movies that break through through into like the insular conversation of our industry, but then yeah. you go, you know, and I feel like everybody's talking about X or everybody's talking about Y. And then I talk to my neighbors who, you know, are a lawyer and a therapist. And I'm like, can you believe everybody's talking about it? And like, what is this? I don't know what <laughs> are. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very easy to get fooled into thinking it's everyone, so true. everyone's talking about, or nobody's talking about, or who's talking about what, but everybody is talking about, yeah. Yeah, but that much, you know, so. The whole world is talking about Queen's yeah. Gambit. It's so true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we can all agree on. That we, we can, can all agree, agree on. on. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, I want to uh, congratulate all of you on all of your films. Um, and, and thank you so much for this great conversation. Um, and of course, the conversation about where film is going, where uh, independent film, where streaming, where theaters are going. It's all. Uh, evolving uh, as as we as we speak, so uh, it'll be uh, interesting to see uh, how it evolves. Uh, so it, it's been a pleasure, and, and thank you all. <laughs>